Hi, welcome back. Yesterday we made a hoodie block pattern and today we're going to trick it out a little bit. A uh, couple things we need to do are take the hood and cross it over in the front. We need to add some draw cords. Uh, we need to add some top stitching to the hood and the pockets and then also some panels over on the left and right shoulders. Uh, let's jump in. I'll show you how it works. It'll look something like this. It has the panels along the shoulders, the draw cords and the top stitching on the hood and the stop stitching with double fabric on the pocket. First we need to fix the neckline. Uh, this point should come up a little bit closer to the top vertebrae so let's fix that with the edit pattern tool and we'll use the curve tool to tweak that. Um, I'm going to grab my edit pattern tool, pull this down and use the curve tool to tweak it a little bit. Okay so now I'm going to grab my edit pattern tool again and shift click both of these necklines to get a total measurement. And so now we need to make sure that our hood base here is uh, about an inch bigger, give or take. And so we'll uh, right click and change the, we'll right click and change the length and this new contour does look like it's a little bit about, about an inch bigger. And that will create the overlap that we need. Okay, now I'm going to use the edit pattern tool to sew the overlap here. Um, you can click on the end of it and just pull it forward and I'm just guessing at about an inch and I'm going to reset the 3D pattern here in the uh, 3D pattern window and re-simulate to make sure it's okay. Okay, it looks good. You shouldn't have any collision problems, but if you do, you can always select on this top layer here uh, and go over and change it to layer one. Uh, it's going to turn that layer totally green and it will stay that way uh, the whole time until you render. Um, we haven't gone over that yet, but in this case, you shouldn't really have any collision problems. Now let's make a draw cord casing. That's what uh, the draw cords are going to go into here. Offset an internal line on this front panel with your edit pattern tool. And we're going to make it about a half inch. Then cut and sew. Now we're going to use uh, this new method. Uh, we're going to clone under. And that makes a copy of something and puts it directly underneath. So here's how it works. When you have a pattern on top and it has stitching or an internal line like in our case, um, those pieces are going to get copied underneath directly with additional sewing to stitch them together. Uh, you can arrange them in the 2D window wherever it makes sense. Uh, you just have to remember which is going to be on the outside. And in this case I'm putting that one on the bottom. So it's helpful to look at the result here in the 3D window. And you can see when I pull the top layer away it reveals the stitching I created with the clone underneath. And that's what's going to create that little pocket for the draw cord. I'm going to make a little pocket of air inside of that. Um, it's going to puff it up a little bit and create a little more realism. So I'll select the pattern on the outside here and make its pressure three. That's a positive pressure. And I'm going to do the same here for the other side. Now it's a little hard to select the inside pattern, the clone under, so I'll select it in the 2D window and make those uh, negative one pressure. Okay, so now we're gonna look at just from Clo3D's method, uh, method two for making a uh, draw cord. Her method is great, I totally follow it and I suggest you watch it as well. I'm gonna do a little modification to it when I sew mine. On the outside layer, I'll add a hole with the internal ellipse tool. That's here. I'm gonna make it 0.25 inches. So it'll fit inside of that little channel that I made. Then I'll cut and sew. Here I'll do something a little different than just, uh, I will make a new fabric, but I'm gonna go ahead and color it this bright green for now, and then I'm gonna make it invisible later. And I'll show you why here in a second. I'm going to grab this button tool in the 3D window and I'm going to add it directly to the center of each of these green pattern pieces. 
Select the button in the object browser over here and change it to a grommet. Uh, I'm going to use the edit button tool and I'll push this back into the fabric and you may have to do this once or twice. Now I'll add a draw cord and the draw cord comes from the hardware and trims menu over here on the left. When it loads you can then maneuver it into place. So we'll use the tack tool to attach it and that's basically like a pin you'll see the surface changes away from thick fabric, revealing kind of the center of the drawer cord. And we're gonna use the tack tool. This is um, right on top. And we're gonna tack it once here. And I'm in split view because I can then attach it to the fabric piece it's going to a little more easily. So I'm gonna tack to the center of the circle pattern. I'm going to try to get it dead center. Um, otherwise, it's really hard to, to know exactly where you're pinning it. So I find it's easiest to do it this way. She does it, just does it perfectly. I just struggle. So this is easier, and I have them centered, did both sides. Oh, I forgot. Um, I have to turn off the collision on these grommets. So use the Edit button tool here and select the buttons. Then come over here to the property editor and you can turn off collision for both of those. Okay, now they should stop fighting with the draw cord. And while we're over here, I'm gonna select the green fabric and lower its opacity to zero. Uh, now the cord looks like it's inside the casing. It's great. And you can maneuver it a little bit further to make it look right. Okay, now let's tweak the pocket a little bit. First thing is we need to select the edges here with the edit pattern tool. And then we're going to right click and offset as internal line again. Um, and these will be, you know, about a quarter inch, half inch, whatever you like. Uh, these are going to be for the top stitching. Okay, then we're going to clone the pattern under, just like we did with the hood. Now in the 3D pattern window, I'm gonna pull the top one out and then the clone under out a little bit as well. I'm gonna arrange it so it's on the outside and make sure that it looks right. And then I'm gonna hit simulate and it's just um, decreases the chance of any major collisions happening. Okay, okay, now let's grab the segment top stitching tool. You can just double click on any of the lines and you'll automatically apply a top stitch. Uh, if you want to change any of these stitches, say the length or how far apart they are or how many stitches per inch there are, you can do that by selecting it over here in the object menu and coming down to parameters. Okay, while I have the top stitch segment tool on, I'll also add a top stitch to the hood. Okay, let's tweak the cuffs and the waistband real quick. First, we're gonna make the waistband a little bit smaller. And this will tighten it up. And then I'm gonna clone each of the patterns under like we did for the pocket and the hood. Additionally, I need to add some elasticity to the top piece of the cuffs. Uh, you can select either the whole pattern piece or the edges. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is add some paneling to the shoulders to trick this hoodie out a little bit. So I'm going to grab the internal line and I'm going to draw out a piece on the shoulder. I'm going to select it with the edit pattern tool and cut and sew. Okay, now I'll make two new fabrics over here. I'm going to label them. And they're going to be two different uh, designs on each of these fabrics. Okay, so I'm going to select the first one in the object browser and go over here down to texture. And I'm going to find the image. And I found these cool street map images that I'm going to use. Okay, so now I'm going to drag this fabric onto the new pattern. And I'm going to use the edit texture tool to scale up and rotate these. And you just have to click on the pattern, then use this gizmo up here to move it around. 
add another image to your other fabric and apply it to the pattern, uh, and then you're done. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, now you've tricked out that hoodie, made it a little more stylish, has a little more realism. Thank you.